Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Kyle Watson, and I'm happy to say I'm the new host of the Voyagers YouTube channel. On this channel going forward, we will be bringing you exclusive interviews with people around the Canadian national team, views from the stands, as well as fan cams after the games. So make sure to stay tuned this window. In today's video, I asked Voyagers and media members to tell me where they think Jonathan David should go next, and then I sat down with Jonathan's high school coach to discuss the clubs. I hope you enjoy. All right, so I'm so pleased to be joined by Joe Fournier, uh, Academy coach at Louis Real Academy, former coach of Jonathan David. How are you doing today? Doing well. How are you? Excited, excited for the this window. So yeah, how are you? I'm very well, and 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 me too. I think uh, I think we're gonna find our way to Qatar, and uh, I think it's we're gonna go out with a bang here because there's no more uh, World Cup qualifying games. I think in Canada until like 2028. So I think everyone's gonna have a lot of fun. Yeah, so so I guess first off, do you do you have a team that you'd prefer him to go to, or are you just kind of excited no matter where he goes? Uh, Barca. <laughs> I would love to see him at Barca. I know that Johnny would love to go at Barca, but I mean, there are other factors for sure. Yeah, they've been looking really good. Uh, the four 0 win in the Clasico was crazy, and it was uh, a great weekend. It was a I, great weekend <laughs> to see him under Xavi would be incredible too. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to say Liverpool. I think that the move that lets him thrive is Atletico Madrid. Where I think Jonathan David should go this summer is Arsenal. So I think Jonathan David's next club should be Borussia Dortmund for two reasons. First of all, young players like him need to play. They need to play a lot. We know Borussia Dortmund um, has a tendency to play young players and give them as many minutes as they need to develop and then eventually sell them on to much bigger clubs. So I think he'd get an opportunity to get a lot of reps and really develop at Dortmund. And of course, who wouldn't want to see Jonathan David and Alfonso Davies face off twice a year in the Bundesliga, one of the great leagues in the world? Good point. I think, uh, I think I totally agree. I think Dortmund would be a good move um, as a Holland replacement. I think he's going to move on this summer. And uh, I think Josh has a great point there that there's few clubs in the world that produce superstars like Dortmund. And I, I also think Dortmund has a tendency to sell their players to Bayern. And I wouldn't mind uh, seeing our Canadian <laughs> boys link up. Together, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, what what's the most important for me or for Johnny, I mean, for him especially, would be to get some playing time, right? Like if we look at some players, some Canadian players that have moved on to bigger clubs and now not getting the minutes that we would want them to get to get to, to be ready for the World Cup. Like, you know, thinking about Estacchio or even Richie Larea. It's unfortunate because these guys are important for us to, to qualify and to perform well at the World Cup. So I wouldn't want something similar to happen to Jonathan. So. If you want to talk about playing time, I think Dortmund would be perfect. I don't think they do have Daniel Malin and, and Yusuf Makuko uh, as forwards, but I, I think they will go for an out-and-out -out striker this summer. So I think they could be very much in play for David. Hi there, my name is Nadja Gebekshin. Uh, I'm from Dundas, Ontario. And I've been a Voyager member now for three months. I joined right after the game I went to in Hamilton. I had such a great experience. Where I think Jonathan David should go this summer is Arsenal. Obviously, they're a team on the rise. So much young talent. And I think for him, it'd be great to link up with Gabriel Martinelli, Pocah Saka, Emil smith -Rowe, Martin Odegaard. I think Arsenal's a team that has a lot of potential for the future. And I think if they have that final piece, that striker, a clinical striker like Jonathan David, I think that can take them to the absolute next level. So that's why I think Jonathan David should go to Arsenal this summer. Again, again, for me, not a bad decision. I think uh, Arsenal is a good place for, for young players as well. Like they like to give young players a, a chance and that goes back like many years, you know, even with uh, Wenger. What do you think about the prospect of, uh, of him playing in the Premier League? I think that's something that he, he relishes a lot. Like he, you know, he's looking forward to playing in, I mean, that the, the Premier League is considered the top league. Some people might argue. Um, including me, but uh, <laughs> I think that's a great place if you want to showcase yourself. I mean, the EPL, you know, with the viewership and the, the competitiveness of all the clubs, it's a great, great league to play in for sure. My opinion on David is as long as he goes wherever he's succeeding in getting playing time um, and improving and continuing to climb the ladder of, of being a great striker, 
then that's where I wanted to be. But if I could have that happen at a particular club, I would want it to happen at Liverpool. Maybe he ends up becoming a replacement for Bobby Firmino. That would be wonderful. So that, that, so that was a very uh, personal opinion in the sense that he's w- hoping that he gets Johnny David for his club. <laughs> Because I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I would see him more in the style of Arsenal than Liverpool. But I mean, again, that's my opinion. So Because I think, I think Liverpool is a harsher environment to integrate. Not saying that Jonathan couldn't do it. But I think, I don't, oh. these are tough questions, man. Well, that's you know? why we brought you on. Yeah, I know, to answer I know, the I tough know. questions. But the, the, the arguments that everyone has brought up, for me, all of those arguments point to Barcelona. You think? Yes. Like, I think Xavi is great with young players. It's a different thing maybe if they don't come from La Messia, right? But let's be honest, Johnny did train under Barcelona for one year, so maybe that helps. <laughs> And, I mean, Xavi seems to be very patient, kind of in the same, uh, uh, to put uh, to continue on my previous comment, I guess he's, he seems to be patient. I find him to be similar in a way uh, to Pep when Pep was at Barca. Um, and that's what Pep did, right? Trust the process, give confidence to the players. But then Barca, are, I mean, financially is not the place right now to, uh, you know, to have a transfer. So, I mean, salary-wise, I think it would be fine, but it's a transfer. What Lille would be asking, that could be an issue. So to come back to the last comment about Liverpool, um, if it was the Premier League, I think Arsenal would be a better fit right now. Hmm. So is that a matter of the system Liverpool plays or do you think the fa- it's more that uh, Liverpool want to play like a false nine, like Roberto Firmino? It's, it's, it's everything, right? I think that uh, like the way Arteta tries to play in Arsenal is similar to what John, I mean, Johnny can adapt, but the way Johnny likes to play, uh, he's a big uh, Barca fan. So he always enjoyed playing the Barca style. And I think Arteta is closer to that than Liverpool are, you know. Um, but he did adapt to the way Lille were playing under two different managers. So, hey, it's still speculation, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think Barca would be a good fit. I mean, they've got um, Ansu Fati, Ferran Torres, uh, Pedri, uh, Frankie de Jong. Like, they have kind of young, promising stars in attacking positions, but they don't have a striker yet. For that, for that generation that Xavi's trying to raise. And I think exactly. Xavi, although he does have a lot of Pep Guardiola in his managerial style, I think he's trying something a bit different. Uh, I think a bit less possession and a bit more uh, directness in, in the way he plays. And I, I think Jonathan David feeding guys like Ferran Torres, um, uh, as well as Ansu Fadi would be incredible mm-hmm. because they're kind of able to play on the wing, but also push into kind of forward positions, which... David likes to do and link up with guys like Laren and yeah. Buchanan. So, yeah, yeah. no no one said Barcelona, but I, I think that is a good fit. And I, I kind of had a hint that you're going to say that based off our last conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's unfortunate because people will think that I say Barcelona because of my, my bias. I'm biased, but for me, it's also what Barca can bring and what Johnny can bring, uh, what both parties can bring to each other. And also... Johnny's favorite club. So, but I mean, at the end, it's a business, right? So, my name is Jamie Nugabauer from Regina, Saskatchewan, and I believe that Jonathan David should sign with Liverpool FC for two reasons. One, uh, because Mohamed Salah's contract is coming up and he's going to demand a lot of money that I don't think Fenway Sports Group will want to pay. And so, Johnny David will be a very nice replacement for Mo Salah when he departs. And the second point is that if he signs with Liverpool and does well, then he's, you know, one of the best club, if not the best clubs in the world. And if it doesn't work out well, you get, get to the best club you can and you figure it out after that. And he'll always have a job because he has Liverpool FC on his resume. So I'm going to say Liverpool. Also, I'm a huge Reds fan. I'll never walk alone. <laughs> I thought I was biased. <laughs> Uh, no, but he did bring up good points. I mean, and you mentioned also with Borussia, right? The fact that Allen was will mostly leave in the summer. Um, that creates a spot for Johnny. 
uh, they need someone of that of of his uh, qualities, and it's the same with uh, Liverpool uh, with Mo Salah. So that's huge, and that it comes back to what I had said about it being a business, uh, timing, um, and that's also why for me Barcelona is still in the conversation because I think the timing as well. You mentioned you know they have all these young players, these, this core of players that are phenomenal players. <laughs> And they're still looking for that number nine, that true number nine. Um, so we'll see. Jonathan David is leaving Lille this summer. As a selfish Canadians men's national team fan, I think that the move that lets him thrive is Atletico Madrid. This is a team in arguably one of the top two or three leagues in Europe uh, that is a perennial league and Champions League contender. It would see him playing under a world-class manager in Diego Simeone. And while Simeone's tactics are defensive, uh, I think that David, as one of the premier pressing strikers in Europe, could fit perfectly into their defense from the front uh, system, which would allow him to thrive alongside a world-class partner in Joao Felix on the counterattacks that they inevitably win. It's a move that leaves him room for a further step up later in his career if a team like Bayern Munich or Real Madrid come calling. Mm. But it's a move that lets him succeed and raise his profile in Europe in the now. And so I think Atletico Madrid is the move for Jonathan David this summer. Let me bring up uh, maybe another argument for that team with the fact that Atletico Ottawa is right here. I don't know if that they would make a connection. Ottawa, native player, playing for Atletico Madrid and then, you know, use that as a selling point for Atletico Ottawa. Who knows, right? Um, he brought, he, I mean, he had good arguments. Again, um, you know, I don't think, I don't, again, it's just speculations, but there are no really wrong answers unless you, you're telling me that he's going to go to uh, uh, stay in League One or go to someone, you know, a team that doesn't compete. I think he's going to look, first of all, for a team that competes in the Champions League because he's, he's experienced it this year. And that's, that's what uh, most players at his level are looking for. And then he's going to look for a team that will fit, just like when he went to Lille, right? He had said that he, uh, the, the, um, the project spoke to him, and unfortunately the people in charge had, have left since, but he said that the, that the project has, uh, was, was speaking to him and that he believed in what they were trying to do. And he knew that it was a stepping stone, obviously, uh, because that's, that's what Lille does, right? They're a selling club. Um, but yeah. Good arguments for Atletico. We'll see. We'll see. If he can play, if he can play in the La Liga, that would still be great for sure. I mean, any of those three leagues that have been mentioned, La Liga, Bundesliga, and the EPL, you can't go wrong. <laughs> I think uh, in Atletico, you're talking about a perennial Champions League yeah. contender. They won La Liga last season. They took it. You know, I don't think Barcelona, anyone has won it other than Barcelona or Real yeah. Madrid since 2014 when yeah. Atletico also won. Um, and I, I like the point that it, it's a stepping stone move and that, you know, this would be the move right underneath before he makes the superstar move to Bayern or Real Madrid. Um, do you think that that's more likely that he goes to a stepping stone club this summer? Or, or, or do you think this is the summer where he's going to go to a Since the start of this call, this is the question that I've been, it's the argument I've been having. With myself, I guess. Um, I'm wondering uh, because he's going to be 22. No, he's 22. Just turned 22. Um, so let's say he sign a... He's, he's probably going to sign for four or five years, right? That would take him to 27. He would have another big spell left, probably, if things go, go well. So maybe he's looking for another stepping stone, you know, to experience something like I mentioned, the Champions League. Like he, 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 won, the, he won two championships from both leagues that he was in already. So maybe he wants to compete for championship, but also get Champions League ex experience where he can compete. Like with Lille, you know, they overperformed. Uh, they did very well, came out of, uh, of the preliminaries. But then if he was to go to Atletico or well, any of the clubs we, we mentioned, they're usually, they usually do very well in Champions League. Like even by, um, not Bayern, sorry, Dortmund. Yeah, we'll see. You're at, you know, I, I, I guess I'm not, I can't commit. I can't give you a straight answer. 
because I I don't have a crystal ball or you know didn't talk to Johnny about it. <laughs> uh, let me ask you this: uh, Is there any team you're kind of hoping he doesn't go to? Any team that you're not really a fan of? Like for me, uh, I can admit that he would be fan. I think you know. He would do well at Liverpool. You talked about maybe there's a tactical mismatch there, but I think Klopp gets the best out of his players. So I think he would definitely experience a lot of growth there. But as a Man City fan, I couldn't watch it. I I, I can't I can't even comprehend the fact that I would be kind of cheering for Liverpool as a Jonathan <laughs> David fan. So my friends would tease me so much if he was to go to Real Madrid. Like my students would lose it if he was to go to Real Madrid because they would make fun of me so much. Especially after this weekend, where where I took time to make fun of them, all the the Madrid fans, um, PSG would be the same. If he was to go there, people would just, I would get a lot of texts. Let's just say. <laughs> so, we'll see. We'll see how it, what uh, how it turns out. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. My pleasure. Thanks for having me.